C-300 Mark II uh, suddenly changed the game completely. It um, records 4K on cards about the same size as CF cards. You don't have to have a separate recorder, so it makes it amazingly portable. It's very important for filmmakers like myself who do a lot of this run and gun, docu-style filming to short films, to ads and everything, to have a camera where just out of the box, it just works. The C300 Mark II is probably the most versatile camera that I've ever come across. Suddenly now we have 14 to 15 stops of dynamic range and that's a game changer for me. The camera test was pretty extensive. Gail did a whole range of dynamic range tests, motion blur tests, low light tests. We spent two days testing the camera rigorously. I have always loved the uh, sort of cinematic quality of the um, C300, C500 sensors. The new camera is uh, really quite remarkable because it seemed to be a very, very gentle camera on skin tones. I saw them count every stop in the dynamic range on the scope and confirm the 15 stops of dynamic range, so I think they were very impressed. Trick Shot is a film about um, a family of con artists who is traveling across country to pay off their son's gambling debt. Whenever a filmmaker starts imagining a story, you have to work in visuals. And in this case, our primary location is the dark, cavernous den of thieves. Once they're there and we meet our bad guy, Angus, the stakes get a little bit higher and we get into a uh, classic pool game shoot-off. And basically, whoever wins this game takes this beautiful uh, 1966 Mustang. Evan loves road movies. He loves the wide open spaces. And so a story where a guy is driving his car through the open desert lends itself naturally to great visuals. We filmed out at Valley of Fire and early light, and it's gorgeous there, but it's this very harsh, very bright light. I always wanted to contrast that with this, this CD bar. And it was important for me to see what's happening inside this bar, but at the same time see outside at this car that's out there. The interesting thing about this shot is, is that with this exterior, with the Mustang, we're able to retain detail with this brilliant sunshine of the exterior and then seeing the subtle gradations into the shadow detail inside. One thing we had on set was the uh, DPV 2410 and this is Canon's new 4K monitor and it's also able to give it a representation of HDR for, for each shot. Curtis, our HDR consultant, monitoring everything with our DIT, making sure that all of that info is there for our 4K finish. It's been very helpful to be able to illustrate high dynamic range scenes in a high dynamic range display environment. The small form factor of the camera makes it wonderful to move around very quickly and it took seconds to balance it on the steady cam. The best part of what I've seen so far that the C300 Mark II has is that capability to go from a handheld to a drone to a studio to steady cam. We're not needing to swap anything out. Unlike other camera systems that are small, this has everything built into it that you need. It has an internal battery which powers the camera. You can pop a lens on it and you have a built-in uh, viewfinder. You don't even have to use the external Canon clamshell style monitor. The form factor of a camera that can half an hour earlier has on monitors and bricks, and the fact that we can take all that off and mount it on a drone and it's ready to go just as is, is awesome. It works really well with the drones. It balances out pretty well when you put the battery in the back and then you set it on there with the lens. We're actually running a 24 millimeter and um, setting it up was a piece of cake. 
we were able to put it in the air. We're chasing cars. We're creating parallaxing, orbiting shots. Uh, I mean, the, the way that the, the system performed in the air was perfect. It um, can work in autofocus with Canon EF lenses, which is really quite remarkable. So if you're doing a run and gun documentary and uh, you're just on your own, that's something that you can use and get amazingly sharp shots without having to worry about having a, an assisting cameraman pulling focus for you. We were able to use the, the XC10 on the shoot, which is this this really tiny point of view camera. I like the um, XC10 enormously. It's a very, very tiny form factor and um, it's not much bigger than the, the camera that's well known out there that does a lot of this material. The advantage is it has a beautiful um, little zoom lens on it which enables you to not just shoot wide angle only. We had shots where we had the camera on the ground as cars were driving over it, we mounted it onto pool cues. That is a 4K camera. It does create beautiful images. One of the most wonderful aspects of this job too was that we got um, an absolutely full set of Canon Cine Primes and five um, Canon Zooms. All of them are beautiful glass. The Canon lenses are all Cine style clear markings, uh, everything a camera system would want. The one very special lens that we got to use was the 50 to 1000 mil zoom. It's um, a phenomenal focal length. The uh, 50 to 1000 is amazing. Um, first of all, I was shocked at how small it is. It's not very much bigger than any of the other zooms that we have. We designed this big shot where our, our hero car is driving off in the distance and we slowly zoom out and just reveal this world that's around us. We started on a thousand mil and then did a pullback of our hero car going away and then pulled back to see the whole scene of um, the bad guys um, standing by a burnt out car. Um, and it was an absolutely spectacular shot. This project's been a fun one. The first thing that I was blown away by was the range of this camera. There's a particular shot of the car where if I rolled that all the way down, you have every single specular highlight. Not saying that you would use that creatively in the grade, but to have that at your disposal, uh, that's just a pleasure. That lamp behind his head was basically um, with a 500 watt tungsten globe in it. It's a particularly good illustration yeah. of high dynamic range reproduction. Right. Being able to maintain detail in the highlights, but subtle detail in your shadow areas Absolutely. all the way down to black. As we roll down, you can see the bulb in the top one, but not only the top one, but the one behind it as well. That completely blew me away because I've never seen that on another sensor. Right. The color reproduction outside in Valley of Fire is pretty spectacular. I mean, I think the colors here are just beautiful. I think the skin tones are great. Trick shot being a very stylized uh, kind of heist film, uh, what we wanted to do was give it a very intricate look. Specifically, the flashbacks are very, very grainy. We added grain in that to really um, separate out the flashback look. That way you know you're definitely in a different time and space. For the post workflow, using ACES 1.0 gives you uh, a ton of advantages. It's really giving you uh, everything that camera saw you have in that file. Whether it's the dynamic range or the color space output, it preserves that and gives uh, total access to that to be able to manipulate it within the grade using ACES color management. Shooting with these cameras was able to give us, just out of the box, I mean, just a gorgeous 4K image. And it's got digital autofocus and all of these tools. It's able to take on the highest of sophisticated television shows. I mean, it's, it's that beautiful. It could also be used as a run and gun camera for reality shows. But to me, it's all about how these technical requirements that we have for filmmaking do they meet the creative needs that we have? Something that's so special about the Canon company is that they make their own cameras, they make their own sensors, they make um, all their own lenses, and so everything is kind of molded to work with each other, and that is totally unique to any camera company. Mm -hmm.